All right, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Hopefully. Hello? Is this thing on? Somebody type something. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, just um, feel free to ask me anything in the chat, and I will answer for you. Or we can talk about other shit. I actually don't really care. <clears throat> and excuse me, because I'm recovering from a cold. So you might hear me, like, eating my own snot and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> the filming for, um, or the question is, so how long did it take to film these two movies? Um, the filming for Puppet Monster Massacre, um, I don't remember exactly. I know it took a couple of months, but, uh, post-production took about a year. I was working a full-time job at the, at the time, and, uh, it was just a lot of post-work. The entire movie was shot on green screen, um, so I had to go in and create backgrounds and matte paintings and, uh, 3D virtual sets and all that stuff. And, and not only that, but um, I was the only one puppeteering the puppets. So in scenes where there are more than one puppet, they had to be composited together. So the entire movie is like one big special effect. So post took a really long time. Um, like I said, about a year. Um, Easter Casket, we started filming in um, the beginning of January, and the movie was released in March. So we shot for... Um, Probably all together, I would say 10, 10 to 15 days, but it was spread over the course of two months. And um, and then post, I was working on post as we were shooting um, and probably worked on it again just solely in post doing sound and visual effects and editing for another month. So we turned that one around pretty quickly. As I go, I get faster at turning the movies around. Um, if I did another movie like um, Easter Casket, or I'm sorry, like Pub Monster Massacre, it would probably take me a really, really long time, which is why there isn't a, a Puppet Monster Massacre 2 yet. So, yeah. Um, I was not formally trained. Um, uh, I just learned how to do stuff from books and um, from websites um, and uh, YouTube shows. There used to be this show, it's not on anymore, called Indie Mogul. Um, and Backyard Effects was the show on Indie Mogul they used to watch, and I learned a lot from that. You can still find the old episodes on YouTube, <clears throat> and for any aspiring effects artists or filmmakers, I really suggest those. Also, there's another great show called Film Riot. I learned a lot about filmmaking from Film Riot, and it's still on the air um, every Thursday, I think, on YouTube um, from Revision 3. And then uh, videocopilot.net, uh, which is um, run by Andrew Kramer, who... Um, does titles and intros for J.J. Abrams uh, TV shows and movies. He um, does like After Effects training DVDs and free tutorials, and he releases all kind of cool plugins. And I learned a lot from that too. So it's just books, the internet, forums, um, and and just trying things. Like that's the best way to learn. Is um, you can be your own uh, film school if you just uh, you know just make a movie, just try. I mean, it's so easy now grab a camera, start shooting something, and show it to people. And if they say it sucks, then try again and see if you can get to the point where they, you know, at least some people don't think it sucks. Um, but, of course, no matter what you do, someone will think it sucks. And I know there's a lot of people who like Easter Casket, but, you know, <clears throat> it could be uh, the greatest movie in the world and there would still be somebody who doesn't like it. Uh, you just have to learn to deal with that, I think, in any form of art that you try to do. But yeah, self-taught, no formal training. I actually dropped out of college. Oh, I just realized, okay, that Steve's VO is Steve. Okay, hi, Steve. <laughs> um, Steve says, I have no idea how you keep coming up with such great stuff. Thanks for making me look good. Uh, Steve was the Megapope, the voice of the Megapope in the movie. And he says, what's next for the rest of 2013? Uh, well, right now... Um, I am moving. As soon as I'm done moving, I'll be filming again. 
I'm doing a couple of shorts. Um, one for uh, a project with James Balsamo, Mike O'Mahony, and Bill Zabub called The Four Filmmakers of the Apocalypse. Um, it's just four deranged shorts from deranged low-budget filmmakers. Um, and then I'm also doing a short for Theater of the Deranged 2, uh, which is um, with another group of really talented filmmakers and put together by James Bressack. Um, <clears throat> after that, uh, I'll be releasing um, Kill That Bitch, which is has been in the works for a while, but I kept getting it derailed. It's about 50% or more so shot, and uh, we'll be finishing that up in May. In June, we will be hitting um, Skinless Pete really hard, um, and that will come out after Kill That Bitch. So those are definitely coming out this year. And then hopefully um, July, August, in that area, I will be filming um, my first serious true um, horror film, uh, meaning that it'll be not funny, not scary, or not funny. It won't have nudity. It won't be really gory. It's just going to be very scary called Country Dark, which I don't want to talk a lot about. Um, I'll be releasing details soon. And I should bring up that some of those movies, um, I know that Kill That Bitch will definitely be one of these, will at first, for the first several months of its release, only be available via my mailing list. So if you want to keep up to date, if you want to get the exclusive information, exclusive access to merch, exclusive access to movies, because I'll be releasing some movies only to the mailing list, you need to be on my mailing list. And the way you do that is you tell me on Facebook you want to be on the mailing list or you email me at puppetmonstermassacre at gmail.com and say, hey, put me on that mailing list. And I'll put you on, and I won't spam you. I only send out maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks to let you know what's going on and to, to offer you some cool shit. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. A lot of stuff. <laughs> Also, those of you in the chat, if you can see Steve's VO, that is um, Steve uh, Rimpici, Rimpici. I'm not sure I ever say that right, Steve. I'm very sorry. He did the voice of Megapope, and he's also the voice of Wolfgang Wagner in um, Pub Monster Massacre, and he's an amazing voice actor. And if you have voice work, then hire Steve because he's awesome. All right. <clears throat> Next question is, of all the work you've done so far, what was the most challenging project to put together from beginning to end? Um, that's probably, <sighs> Pub Monster Massacre is probably technically my most challenging because it was my first film I had ever done, and uh, it was just a lot of work, just tons and tons and tons of work that I'd never attempted before, um, but the the movie I had the most roadblocks and setbacks was uh, Zombie A-Hole, which is my second movie, which hopefully we'll be showing on IndieHorror.tv soon, uh, preferably the director's cut, and uh <clears throat> the reason for that was, um, for one, I was jumping back and forth between uh, Toledo and three hours away in my hometown in Indiana. So it was a lot of travel because a lot of my actors were in Indiana. Um, I had a lot of people cancel on me, like flake out of doing uh, their scenes, which sucked. And so I'd have to find replacements. Um, also, our main actor, Brandon Salkill, who played, if you're watching uh, Easter Casket, he played Cardinal O'Malley. He got appendicitis and uh, got very, very sick, and we couldn't film without him because he's literally in every scene. And so we had to shut down filming for a month and a half, two months. And a movie you know, that probably should have taken you know, two months to film ended up taking nine months spread out. And uh, that was incredibly, incredibly nerve-wracking. And I was so glad when we were finally done with it. And, uh, of course, when I watch it now, like I don't really think about that. I just like the movie, but... Um, yeah, it was a colossal pain in the butt. Um, we also had a, an effects artist who was just on a very popular uh, sci-fi channel show. I won't name names here. Um, <clears throat> was supposed to do special effects uh, for the film, and I paid him, and he didn't send the effects until you know weeks after the movie had wrapped. He had an excuse every single time I called him, even though I'd already paid him the money, and so uh, that sucked. So be careful who you hire, I guess. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Next question. Unless you guys just want me to like sing or fart into the microphone or something. 
I might be able to do both. Um, the question is, how have you been received on the film festival and convention circuits for your films? Uh, I don't do a lot of film festivals because I never have the money to enter them. Um, you know, if people have film festivals and they're like, hey, can we show your stuff and they'll show it for free, then, you know, I'll let them sh show anything they want because it's good exposure. But um, I generally just don't have the cash to do film festivals. The the few screenings that I've done have um, always gone, on, gone over really, really well. Um, it's funny, the movie I've screened the most is Puppet Monster Massacre. And uh, people generally, it, it's interesting to see that movie with different crowds uh, because people laugh at different things. And, you know, um, there's a joke that you'll think has fallen completely flat and because nobody laughed at it in Detroit. But then you go to Cincinnati and when you show the movie, people will laugh their asses off at the part that nobody laughed at in Detroit. So that's really interesting. Um, on the convention circuit, I think we do really well. Um, we haven't got to venture out of the Midwest very much. Hopefully in the future we can start. I know Days of the Dead has a show in L.A. and stuff like that. It'd be cool to spread out and get my stuff out there. But, um, <clears throat> uh we do really well. I think a lot of my um, fan base was gained through meeting people at um, conventions and not being an asshole to them because some, you know, some people at conventions are assholes, unfortunately. It's the reason I don't go and get uh, autographs from people anymore. I'd rather meet them in their natural habitat than at their table because sometimes their people at their table are cranky. But um, I think we've done really well. We usually sell really well at conventions. It's always fun to meet people and sign stuff and make new friends and hang out with people who like your, your stuff. Um, so yeah, I think we've, I think we've done fairly well actually. Um, you can ask me behind the scenes questions. Um, anything you want to ask seriously, I'll answer anything. You can ask me, Personal stuff. I may not tell you the truth. I might lie to you, but you, but you could ask. Is that true? You learned about the movie from a shirt. I bet I know who was wearing that shirt. I bet that Jeremy Dobson uh, was wearing that shirt. Who's actually a producer of the film. Um. Uh, Robert from Indie Horror just told me that they learned about the movie from someone wearing the shirt. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, damn, that advertising works then, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I'm almost positive that was Jeremy Dobson wearing it. Um, yeah. He, um, Jeremy Dobson, by the way, like, let me just, like, tell you how awesome this guy is. He's, like, the, the Dustin Mills production super fan, but he's also my friend, and he's awesome. And uh, he buys props from my movies. He supports my movies monetarily. Not only buys the movies, but donates money to the movies and, and stuff like that. And he's just huge, huge uh, supporter of indie films, in particular my stuff. And uh, eternally grateful to that guy for being an awesome dude. And I guarantee you that was the shirt. He, that was the guy wearing the shirt was Jeremy. Um, I could be wrong, but I can almost guarantee it. By the way, I think you can buy those shirts via Fast Custom Shirts at dmpstudios.com. Um, if you go to the merch section, I think the shirts are up for sale there. I wonder how many people stuck around for both movies. Or if, like, Puppet Monster Massacre scared them away. Or they started watching Easter Casket and then started, like, getting worried about their eternal soul. Have there ever been any injuries or run-ins with the law during filming of my films? Um, run-ins with the law. No, I don't think so. And injuries? There is one injury uh, that I can think of in all of that, of that produced blood in all of my films. And that was in Easter Casket when Josh Eel, who plays Father Asher, throws himself through the wall of cardboard boxes. He got a cardboard box burn on his forearm, which is now a scar. But uh, other than that, oh, and in Zombie A-Hole, we had a lovely lady by the name of Harper St. Clair running uh, 
butt ass nude, just vag to the wind through the forest, and she had an allergic reaction or got poison ivy or something like all over her body. And uh, I felt really terrible and was also really worried that she was going to sue me, but she didn't. So thank you for that. <clears throat> but those are the only those are the only two things. Um, I try to keep things pretty safe. I know it looks like we're doing dangerous things sometimes, but it's um, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's movie magic. Sarmaki Kumansanti, I can't pronounce your name, said why. What are you saying why to, sir? Just why do I make movies? I don't know. It's just a big why question mark. Elaborate. Sour Samasanti. Which event, sir? I'm confused. He said, did those events happen? Um... Robert says, every filmmaker seems to have a specific camera they love to work with. What is your weapons of choice? I use um, a Canon 60D because I like the interchangeable lenses. I was a photographer before I was a filmmaker. And so um, with those lenses and the manual settings on the cameras, I can produce uh, pretty images. If I had uh, all the money in the world, um, and not all the money in the world, if I was slightly uh, more wealthy, I would have a 5D Mark II. But alas, I am stuck with my 60D. But I like it. I also use a GoPro sometimes if we need to do something dangerous or for POV shots or for underwater stuff. I use a GoPro. Uh, Horophilia Jason says, what's your favorite film so far? Um, Jason, do you mean what? what's my favorite of my films or of films in general? Because films in general, I could sit here all night and talk about because I don't know what my favorite movie is. My go-to for saying what my favorite movie is is Monster Squad. I love me some Monster Squad. Okay, of mine. What's favorite movie of mine? Oh, fuck, that's hard. Um, I don't know. I think... I tend to, like, favor the movie I just finished. Here's, here's what I'll say. Oh, no, you're okay, man. Here's what I'll say. I will say that I think that Night of the Tentacles and Easter Casket are my two best films. And um, for completely different reasons, though. Um, I When I watch those films, I bearing the budget in mind, see what we were able to accomplish, and um, am rather proud of them. And the funny thing about Night of the Tentacles is when I finished editing it, um, and, and I was getting ready to send it out to reviewers, I hated it. I was so mad at that movie. Um, I didn't think anyone was going to like it because it was so weird and personal and dialogue driven. And then the horror community loved that movie. Not everybody, obviously, but like lots of people loved that movie. And, uh, then I realized that it, you know, watching it again, I was like, Oh, it actually did have something to say and it's worthwhile. So I think Easter casket nine of the tentacles are my two best. Um, <clears throat> indie horror says this is an interesting time to mention remakes due to evil dead reboot. But one, what is your take on remakes? Should they be made? And if that's a yes, two, what film should you remake? Or would you remake if you could remake any film? Okay, as far as remakes go, um, I don't care about remakes. Like, uh, some are good, some are bad. I don't know why everybody gets so pissed off because, you know, for instance, The Fog. Uh, John Carpenter's The Fog is a great movie. It comes out. And uh, it's it's fantastic. I love that movie. So they make a remake of it, right? So they remake that movie, and it's a big piece of shit. That doesn't erase John Carpenter's movie, okay? I mean, you get the slight annoyance when you're like, have you guys seen The Fog? And they think you're talking about that new turd, and you're really talking about the old one that's awesome. You get that, but, like, you know, remakes don't erase the original, so there's no reason to be mad at them. Um, some, I mean, unless they're just, you know, overtly bad. Um I, I think it's no different than any other movie. It's either good or it's bad and whatever. You know, I like some remakes. I think the Blob remake is fantastic. I think people forget that The Thing is a remake of A Thing from Another World. I like the Fright Night remake. Uh, I thought it was good. I like the original Fright Night for completely different reasons, but um, 
the total recall remake sucked balls i mean <laughs> you know it just it, it just depends and what film would i remake um i think puppet master i if i had to narrow it down to one i would make i would remake puppet master and i would just fucking try my best to fix that franchise because i love those movies but man are they not good Okay, what is your relationship to Josh and Brandon? And what leads you to continually use them in your films? Um, I also said, whoa, Total Recall Remake Rock. You're crazy. Um, uh, my relationship to Josh is that he's my best friend of like 15 years um, since middle school. And uh, I uh, grew up with him. Uh, we uh, spent way too much time together uh, growing up. Um, we can basically read each other's minds. Um, <clears throat> Uh, also, we were president and vice president of the theater department at our school because we were both total nerds. And um, so, I mean, I know he's he's dependable. Um, I like what he brings to a production, and I just like having him around. Brandon I met uh, when I was making Pub Monster Massacre, and we just hit it off because we're both crazy in the same way. And he also just happens to be a fantastic fucking actor who throws himself 300%, if that's even possible, into everything he does. And I'll put him in every movie. <clears throat> I mean, he'll he'll play the monster. He'll play the hero. He'll do whatever. He just loves making movies. And I love having that dude in my movies. Um, three makes are just like the same movie but different. It's like, when did he do it? I, I agree. Okay, Indie Horror. I love Puppet Master 3, but there's so many that are too weird to take seriously. I like 2, 3, and then 4 and 5 are all right in the Puppet Master series. Uh, but, uh, man, those new ones are not good. They're really not. They keep trying to push them like, this is our best one ever. And it's like, no, it's not. It's sort of awful. And, um, there's so much potential there. It's such a good idea, but I think they're all too close to, to it to know, um, to know how to make it good. They need like a, they need like a fan, like a fan named Dustin Mills to come in and, and make one and, uh, and, hopefully fix it i don't know if i could fix it but i'd like to try because i just love that series so much oh i'd also like to remake the giver have you guys ever seen the giver um i love the giver i would remake that movie because it's a guy in robot armor fighting werewolves essentially and you don't get much cooler than that uh horophilia jason says what budget would you kill for um actually honestly like that depends on the movie um I don't really have aspirations. Like I get in this argument or not really an argument, this discussion with other filmmakers about like, Oh, like what's your dream actor? You know, would you want to put fucking Brad Pitt in a movie? And you know, like how much money would it be great to have a million dollars to make Puppet Monster Massacre, or, you know, the remake or Puppet Monster Massacre two when you had a million dollars. And the truth of the matter is, is like, I have no aspirations to do that. I sort of just like making my crazy bullshit, low budget movies. Cause my fear is that, um, as more people get involved, as, you know, m more money comes, you know, there's all these people with money and they put pressure on you and there's all these people to answer to. And then, oh, Indie Horror is saying basically what I'm saying. It's true. Yes, uh, the more more money, more problems because uh, my stuff may look sleeker. It may have better special effects. It may have name actors. But I know that that's you have to sacrifice control to get that. And control of my art is not something that I'm really ready to let go of. Uh, you know, because, like, I do weird things in my movies. <clears throat> I shoot my nudity very in a weird way, for instance. Um, I like to do my monsters in a weird way. I like to tell weird stories. <clears throat> I feel like the more money that came in, we'll be more pressured to be normal. And that's a scary thought to me. Um, so unless it was, like, from angel investors who were like, here's money, do whatever you want to do then um, I do shoot my nudity in a way. You don't think I shoot it in a weird way? I think <laughs> here's what I mean by that. I shoot nudity not in a way that a Hollywood movie would shoot their nudity. How about that? Um, I tend not to shy away from um, uh, certain parts of the anatomy, I guess. Um, I also like I like shooting scenes of casual nudity, like the scene in Easter casket where uh, Janet J as Prima is just walking around naked, brushing her teeth, talking to <laughs> to Aubrey. Like I just like doing weird stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, 
But yeah, as for the budget question, like I don't have a good answer. Uh, for Theater of the Deranged, I started, I was going to make an animated movie, but I've just, I have not had the time to do the animation and also pay my bills, unfortunately. So I'm going to do a live action short that um, I don't want to talk about yet because um, when when I announce it for James, James will probably want to, to release it. So I don't want to say anything and overstep anything, but um, it'll be crazy. It'll be crazy and wacky and it'll be my style. <laughs> I would love to be on ABCs of Death Part 2, um, especially, uh, especially since they get $5,000, right, for five minutes. Like, sweet Jesus. Like, I, I, Bath Salt Zombies was made for five grand, you know? Like, I could make, I could make two or three movies for five grand, so five grand to do five minutes would be really awesome. I would love to do ABCs of Death. I haven't seen the first one, though. Maybe I should watch that. My biggest influence? Oh gosh, <clears throat> there's so many. Like I think my my influences come from a mishmash of things that I watched growing up. Um, uh, I I've been told, and that I think this is 100 percent accurate, that my movies are very uh, Japanese in a weird way. Um, that there's a lot of Japanese influence, and I think that comes from growing up watching. Godzilla movies and weird foreign stuff and Power Rangers. You can definitely see the Power Rangers influence in Easter Casket and anime and all that stuff. I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, I like the way that Guillermo del Toro tells stories and I like the subject matter. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's it's a lot of people. It's you know it's um, Guillermo del Toro. It's uh, Robert Rodriguez. It's Sam Raimi. It's uh, Peter Jackson. It's a lot of different people. So, did I hear the Japanese comment immediately after the Tentacles film? Uh, no, actually, after Bath Salt Zombies is when people started saying that, and then retroactively to Night of the Tentacles, and then uh, people are call <laughs> like have been calling it out on Easter Casket that it's it's very Japanese in nature. Am I friends with many other low budget directors that are also crazy horror directors? Um, some. Um, I actually find a, a lot of filmmakers I don't get along with. Um, not that we like fight or anything, but it's just that I don't like to keep their um, their company. Uh, <clears throat> it's mostly just because, like, when you're a, a filmmaker, you're in a, a position of power, and so some of the some filmmakers are control freaks, and um, and I'm also like I'm a bit of a control freak. So if you put two control freaks in a room. They don't much get along with each other because they're both trying to control the situation the entire time. Um, people I would I would say that you should check out um, is uh, Sean Burkett at Concept Media Films, um, uh, Eamon Hardiman at Razor Sharp Studios, uh, Henrik Kudo. Um, I can't remember his uh, production company name right now. Um, uh, Bill Zabub um, has been a great help to me, and he makes crazy, crazy movies. Um, Fred Vogel at Toe Tag is a friend and uh, a very good filmmaker. He doesn't release a lot of films, but he makes very good films. So those are the people that I like. Have you seen a lot of other indie horror films in the past year? If so, do you have any favorites? Um, gosh, I'd have to think. I did watch just I did just watch um, uh, bludgeon by sean burkett which i rather liked i also did effects for it so i guess i'm sort of um biased uh god i don't know i haven't watched a lot of movies <laughs> honestly um there's lots of good stuff out there i'm sorry i'm like i'm drawing a blank here but there is a lot there are lots of good um indie horror films out there um actually you know what a good reviewer to watch is mr parka on youtube who is in easter casket he played the the coroner in uh, Easter Casket, and he does a review show where he reviews lots of really low-budget, no-budget indie stuff. Like, he just reviewed Dead Weight, which I think you guys showed on here. So, um, which I haven't seen Dead Weight yet. I need to see that. Um, oh, I forgot to mention Steve Radzinski, uh, who did Everyone Must Die. Everyone Must Die is a good horror comedy slasher. Um, don't want to forget Steve. Steve's a good friend and a good filmmaker, so check out his stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of stuff, I guess. Um, besides, like, my friends' movies. Use a lot of digital effects in your films. Do you have a preference between CGI and practical effects? I don't have a preference. Here's what I think. They're both tools. 
and not every tool is right for every job. So if I have a job that is better suited for CGI, I try to do it that way. And, and if I can do it practically, I'll do it practically. Basically, the rule of thumb is if it can be done practically, I do it practically. If I can't, then I do CGI. Um, I know some people, a lot of the horror community really hate CGI, but I, I'm telling you guys, you got to just kind of get over it, especially if you're watching no-budget movies, because sometimes that's the only way we can do the scene we need to do is to use some CGI. So um, no, no, no preference, really. I guess my preference is practical, but they're both just really good tools. you got to know how to use them. Um, Z Carter 80 says, I've been just enjoying the film and the question folks have been asking. Thank you, sir. But you have a puppet project that's not a Dustin Mills original you want to work on, like a Puppet Master or some other franchise like Chucky or Gremlins. I would love to work on any of those. Like I said, um, I would love to remake Puppet Master, or reboot Puppet Master, or even make a sequel. Um, I think it would be awesome to do a Child's Play movie, although I think Don Mancini does a really good job with the Child's Play movies. And uh, to do a, a new Gremlins would be um amazing actually i just really that's you know i really do like puppets a lot uh for whatever reason i like creature effects i like puppet effects um if i can work them into a movie i always do like even in basalt zombies there's like a mutated jack russell chihuahua creature you know stuff like that anytime i can work an animatronic or a puppet in, um i do that you know that was i mean i would have never done easter casket without a puppet as the villain you know what i mean like a lot of Easter bunny films or a lot of Easter horror films use a guy in a bunny suit. And like, no offense to those guys, but I'm really tired of that. So um, uh, it's just, it, I, I would just rather have a puppet. How many more movies past Easter casket are scheduled to come out? Um, this year, there should be at least three more films, which will make six this year. Um and uh, beyond that, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. Um, I'm going to keep going. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not rushing. I just like to keep working. So um, there's, you know, by the time I'm done, there will be a lot of Dustin Mills movies out there because I have a lot of ideas. Um, Dustin Mills presents Ghoulies or Critters 5. I would love to make a Ghoulies or a Critters movie. That would be amazing. Ian Scream says, what about making a dark fantasy film? I actually... Um, there's an animated film that I am developing. Um, it'll be my first full-length animated film. I don't know when it's going to come out. I'm just letting you know that I'm developing it. That is a dark fantasy set in an in, uh, insane asylum and has to do with the power of insanity and obsession and um, has themes about power and control. That um, it has. It's more of a dark fantasy than a horror, I'll say that. <clears throat> um Indie Horror says, how have you funded previous films? Do you use online fundraising or do you use personal funds, private financiers? Um, I, you know what? I've done both. Uh, some movies I fund myself. Some movies uh, like um, Basalt Zombies was funded by MVD and Clint Weiler. And then uh, Easter Casket was actually produced by Josh Eel, who plays Father Asher. <clears throat> he, um, put, he put forth $2,000. And then we raised three thousand three hundred on an Indiegogo, and about three three thousand total is on screen, and the rest of the money went to getting DVDs made, mailing out DVDs. I'm getting ready to mail T-shirts and posters to the people who donated. I'm behind because we've been moving, but uh, uh, it's just different places, you know. Whatever whatever gets the movie made, you know, kind of thing. Um, uh, Kill that bitch was um, where I did like little mini loans from fans. Um, skinless Pete, I am funding. It just comes from all over. Ian Scream says dragons. I don't know. There's something I kind of want to do with dragons. I don't know. Maybe someday. I'm not a huge like dragon fan. Like I have a friend who's like dragons, but I just I don't know. They're all right. I'd probably have to put my own spin on them to really like them. Z Carter says, "Aren't there rights up for grabs on ghoulies and critters?" I don't know. Are they? <clears throat> I'm sure I couldn't afford them, <laughs> but. It would be cool to make one of those movies, especially Ghoulies. I think if I had the option, I would make a Ghoulies movie before I'd make a Critters movie. Because Ghoulies, like, I, I really like Ghoulies 2 and 3. Uh, I don't like the first one or the fourth one so much, but 2 and 3 are really fun. And that's right up my alley. Puppets killing people and boobies and all that stuff. With the move, are we getting that green screen studio we've been dreaming of? Uh, Kinda, yeah. I am building... I was just at the place scoping out the garage today, and 
um, have plans to turn that into a green screen studio, um, especially since there's a project that I want to start pre-production on later this year if, um, knock on wood, if the money is there and if it's possible, called Plague of Monsters, which will be an entirely green screen um, action horror adventure movie that will also be, and don't kill me for this, it'll also be relatively family friendly. It'll be like a PG, PG-13 kind of deal. Um, still blood, but it'll be like green monster blood and stuff like that. Lots of action, um, just lots of crazy action and effects, it's like a big live action cartoon, like the Inhumanoids, if you remember the Inhumanoids come to life. <clears throat> Do you know any other underground filmmakers who have similar or lower budgets to your films? Um, I think, I'm trying to think here. Um, uh, Mario Xavier um, made Living Dead Lockdown for like 100 bucks, I think, if you want to check out Mario's stuff. Um, <clears throat> and um, I don't know, I think lots of people are working in the same budget range as me, honestly. Um, I know that, uh, I think Henrik Kudo told me he did Babysitter Massacre for a thousand bucks. You know, I think most of us just work with what we have because, um, I think our, the mentality of the ultra low budget filmmaker is just that we want to make the movie. Uh, that's, you know, that's our prime motivation. So, or make any movie, you know, any of our ideas. So as long as we have enough money to get the camera and get a couple people, I think we'll do what we can. Um, I don't, I, you know, I would try to never let a budget hold me back. Uh, Horror Philly Jason says, who helps with the fight choreography? Um, on, let's see here, on uh, Basalt Zombies, um, Josh Eel did most of the fight choreography. In Kill That Bitch, I did most of, or, yeah, most of it, and Josh helped. And in this movie, I think I actually did all of it, and Josh, yeah, Josh probably threw in some suggestions and stuff, I think. No, and you know what, I think he actually did a lot of the choreography in the beginning. It's hard to remember. We go back and forth. When we were in high school, we did, um lots of uh, um, shows about the Three Musketeers at, for um, theater to the point where we ran out so our director had to write more. So um, uh, we uh, um, we have lots of experience kind of just putting together stage fights and stuff like that. Can you be contracted to adapt a script? If so, what's your rate? Um, yeah, I would. I could, I could write. Uh, you're asking write for hire essentially yes i could do that um i don't know i don't know what my um rate would be we would have to talk about it i, I don't want to say a number here publicly but um, if you have something you'd like me to write then you know let's talk about it we can figure it out um jason says what is your favorite individual scene in one of your movies i love the fight on the car in zombie a-hole oh okay um thank you by the way um my favorite individual scene um that's so rough man to, to to think you know like to think about my own stuff like my favorite part of my own stuff um i'm just gonna i'm gonna talk about easter casket because i have two scenes in easter casket that i really really uh love okay actually three three scenes in easter casket that i really really love one is the scene um with jason crow and ronnie jonah with the dildo because they uh, are such good actors that they took my writing and made it way funnier than it actually was and just killed that fucking scene. The other scene I, I really like in Easter Casket is that sex scene because it is uh, steamy and sexy, and I'd never shot anything like that before. You know, there's sex in Night of the Tentacles, but not to that extent, not not that romantic and intense, and so I'm rather proud of that. And my number one favorite scene from Easter Casket is the scene um, with Aubrey and Peter in the um, warehouse when they're talking to each other. Um, and I really like that scene because I felt like we did some really good puppeteering and the characters really interacted well, especially since one was, you know, just a hand. I think it worked out really well. What actor would make you turn into a total fanboy if you met them in person? Um, I've met this guy in person, actually, and he's the nicest human being I've ever met, and that's Doug Jones. Um, Doug Jones, who plays Abe Sapien in the Hellboy films, and he's in uh, Pink Labyrinth, and he's in a, uh, a funny indie comedy called My Name is Jerry, and lots of stuff, and I'd like to work with him one day. He's also in um, The Danger Element, the Battle Jitney series on YouTube. 
Um, Doug is amazing to me. He's like a god to me. And to meet him in person, I, I had to like work up the courage to go over and talk to him. Like I sat looking at him all day and I was like, I, fuck, I just got to go talk to him. Finally went and talked to him. And like the nicest human being I've ever met in my entire life. Ian says Godzilla scene, which must be his favorite scene. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I like that Godzilla scene, too, because we did some fun stuff with uh, miniatures in that scene, I think. I um, We had a fun time shooting that and putting the effects together and stuff. Did I miss anything? I don't think so, right? Any actors on my wish list? Um, Doug Jones. I'd like to work with Doug Jones. I think I'd like to work with Jeffrey Combs, but he sort of gave me the cold shoulder once at a convention um, when I was getting something signed and kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, but I'm not going to hold it against him. Um, I just think he's amazing, so I would like to put him in something. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, um... Uh, Tiffany Shepis. I think Tiffany Shepis is amazing and she's too good to be in B-movies so I don't know why she's in B-movies but I'm glad she is um, and on top of being an amazing actress she's naked all the time so that helps and um, uh, yeah those those are some people I'd really like to work with um, not, not really any Hollywood people so much maybe Christopher Walken uh, is the, like the most A-list I would go Um but yeah, I don't know. Those are people I like to work with. But definitely Doug Jones. I want to work with him so bad. Uh, <clears throat> Speaking of Doug Jones, does it piss you off when they call movies like Absentia low budget, 70K supposed budget? Um, it doesn't piss me off. Because um, that I guess that is technically low budget, right? I mean, it is. What I'm doing is not low budget. I, I, I accidentally say low budget all the time. My stuff is considered uh, no budget or DIY. And so it's like a different class, um, which some people don't realize. I remember, and I didn't realize it at first either, when um, when Pup Monster Massacre came out, it was being talked in the same circles as uh, the movie Rubber and uh, Hobo with a Shotgun, which are both much higher profile movies. And so like I thought, I'm like, oh, I'm in the cool kids club, you know, and like I tried to talk to those guys and thought I was like, I'm like, isn't it both cool that we're both in magazines, you know, like trying to talk to these guys and they had no interest in fucking <laughs> talking to me like they could not give two shits about me. And I realized that I'm not really in that club, you know, <laughs> I'm in a much different, you know, but a better club, honestly, I think, but I'm in a much different bracket of filmmakers. So, um, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I mean, uh, I wish I had 70 K to make a to make a cool movie, like if Plague of Monsters had 70K, that would be amazing. Um, but uh, it doesn't really make me mad. Um, I, I, what does make me mad is when people have that much money and then they complain that they don't have enough money. <laughs> that bugs me, but, you know, whatever. Uh, when you're writing, what inspires you to come up with the kill scenes and do you try to be super creative when doing that? Um, I don't know what inspires me. I think I just try to... Um, it's sort of like circumstantial or it's like a if then situation like um, I'm writing something now where I'm literally going okay what is the worst thing that could happen to this person right now and then I write that I write what I think is the worst thing in Easter Casket I just wanted the kills to be funny and um, kind of appropriate to what was going on so it's exploding Easter eggs carrots through the head um, speeding bunny poop things like that I don't know. I don't know what inspired. I just sort of write, and that's what comes out. Um, or try to like write a kill that maybe I haven't seen. I think in Zombie A Hole, um, my favorite kill in that movie is when he twists the chick's head off, and then like her naked, decapitated body like wanders away and falls down. Like I'd never really seen that, so I wanted to do something like that. Um, that's what actually what inspires a lot of just uh, my filmmaking in general is I try to do things I haven't seen before. I try my best anyway. Um, to fill a niche to be like oh I don't think this has been done so let's try this <clears throat> not always successfully but you know you gotta try I try not to like rip anybody off essentially you know what I mean um, I think we have some cool kills in uh, kill that bitch that are violent and also psychologically sort of torturous to other characters 
Or Jason says, uh, we'll, we'll keep on kicking ass. I'd rather watch six Dustin Mills films than one lame uninspired bigger budget horror film. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much. Z Carter says, I love your films, man, and I'm look forward to seeing more of them, but I'm wondering when is Easter Casket 2 being released? When is, uh, thank you, by the way, when is Easter Casket 2 being released? I don't know. We've actually talked about maybe filming that um, early next year. Because what might happen with Easter Casket is I'm selling it myself now exclusively from eastercasket.com. Go over and get your copy. Um, uh, uh, I'm selling it um, exclusively from there now, but next year around Easter time, we may uh, try to uh, give it to a distributor um, so that they can hype it up for Easter 2014 because I think it has real potential, kind of like Thanksgiving did. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. A funny tidbit, by the way, um, Easter Casket was made for less than half the budget of um, total, half the budget of Thanksgiving. Just wanted to put um, no offense to anyone involved. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I do um, want to make um, an Easter Casket too. Uh, we, I have a lot of ideas. Uh, the producer, uh, Josh Eel, he has lots of ideas. Um, we want to do some more stuff with Mega Pope because he's really funny and people seem to like him. Um, I think it would open with a really nasty birthing scene. So, Thanks Killing sequel in the works at all? They're, they did do a sequel, Thanks Killing 3, um, which is actually really good, which is, I th- thought um, it was actually better than the original because they like skipped Easter Casket 2, or not Easter Casket, they skipped Thanks Killing 2, um, but, uh, it, it's like part of the joke. I don't know. Thanks Killing 3 was fun. There's a lot of puzzles, weirdness, and I liked it better than the first one. Um, the first one I thought was all right. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think I understood why it got so much attention, but I mean, it, but it's a, it's a solid, low-budget movie. But I would seek out the... because I, I rather like that one. But uh, yeah, Easter Casket too. Um, um, I would like to do it. Um, I haven't done a sequel to one of my movies yet. Um, I do want to do that at some point. I have ideas for sequels to just about everything. Horror J says, "What are your thoughts on anthologies and collections in the indie horror scene?" Um, I you know, I'm on a couple or coming up. I've been on the collective. Um, Collective Volume 4 I have a short on. Yeah, that's, by the way, if you want to see a good sampling of uh, what's going on in no-budget horror, check out the Collective series. Um, it's a good, like, sampler plate of what's out there. You can kind of um, find filmmakers that way. Um, uh, uh, anthologies and collections as a total, I think I think it's a, it's a cool way for us to get our movies out there. I think it's a cool way for, to get, for people to see what's going on. You know, they can spend 10 bucks, get one DVD, and see the work of, you know, several different filmmakers. And um, I think it's really cool. Um, I have to say, what it, like, depending on what, ho- like, budget level you're talking about, I saw um, VHS and... Um, and I don't want to come down on the people who made VHS, but I thought that movie did everything wrong that it could have possibly uh, done in a movie called VHS that was different indie filmmakers. I was really disappointed by that. Um, I just could not groove to to the tune it was playing. Um, Z card so I want to see you and Kevin Strange get down on a project in the future. I'm sure that Deb, I'm I, <laughs> I love Kevin. Um, I think Kevin's out of his mind, but I love him. Um, he was a big influence on me, actually. I met him at the first convention I ever went to and saw this dude with all these movies, and I bought everything on his table and then went home and watched him, and I was like... And I like his stuff, by the way. I really like the dialogue and the weird stories in his movies. And, um, uh, you know, now he writes, and I haven't read... I have Strange Sex, but I haven't read it yet. I need to stop and read it. But uh, um, I would imagine he and I will probably collaborate on something sometime in, in the future hopefully because i like the way his brain works and uh, he and i get along pretty well yeah i think jab pictures um zeb also said jab pictures rocks um 
I think Jab may be working on a feature soon. I, I, I maybe I shouldn't say anything, but Jason uh, sort of in, hinted or intimated to me that there's a feature in the works that sounded kind of cool. So hopefully that happens. Um, but yeah, check out the collectives. Um, they're um, they're cool. It's a cool way to get into to uh, um, indie horror. Uh, Jason says VHS two is supposed to be a lot better. I certainly hope so. <coughs> my um, I don't want to rag on it or get on that topic too much. My fundamental problem with VHS is that none of the stories were filmed on VHS. Have I seen any good ultra low budget films lately? Yeah, I would. If you like slasher movies, I would check out uh, um, Babysitter Massacre by Henrik Kudo. Um, if you also uh, a slasher comedy, Everyone Must Die by Steve Rosinski. Um, there's lots of good stuff out there. Just re- read reviews, go to Horrorphilia, go to, um, Mr. Park on YouTube and, um, and watch and just, you know, kind of decide for yourself. I, I know found is another one that's supposed to be good. Crossbearer is supposed to be good. Um, uh, bills above stuff is fun. If you can kind of, if you can dance to his tune, then his stuff is really cool. Um, Indie Horror says, what do you think of Full Moon or Troma, sort of super indies who make a lot of money that don't seem to spend any of it on their work, but have been built on brand value mostly? Um, I, okay, I'll start with Full Moon. Um, I liked Full Moon a lot. I like Full Moon's, like, filmography from the 80s into the 90s a lot. Um, they were doing really cool original stories. Um, they had some really good talent on board. Stuart Gordon, Brian Yuzna. People like that working on their stuff. Uh, Bu- John Buechler doing the uh, special effects. <clears throat> they had really cool stuff going on. I haven't liked any of their recent stuff. And um, I feel like maybe Charlie Band has lost touch with what made Full Moon really cool back in the day. Um, I could be wrong, but just from his interviews, it maybe seems that way. Because um, I don't really I don't really get into like Ginger Dead Man and Ooga Booga. I liked it better when they kind of took themselves seriously and just made serious B movies. Um, you know, back in the, the Puppet Master uh, subspecies days, um, Trancers, that kind of stuff. I love those movies. Trauma, uh, Trauma. <sighs> the thing about Trauma is that they have a thousand movies, and about five of them are watchable. And um, the other thing about Trauma is that I have talked to several filmmakers who have worked with Trauma who I don't want to talk shit about anybody, but I'll just say they have not been satisfied with the treatment of their films or um, just not satisfied with working with Troma. Um, I think Troma was really cool when I was in high school because it seemed like filmmaking and it was really badass, you know, and Class of Newcomb High was awesome and Toxic Avenger was awesome, and I still like those movies. Um, I like Geist, but uh, um, I don't know. It's just not my not my thing so much, I guess, anymore. Um, I think maybe they're too self-referential now, um, which is cool for the fans, but I wish they would just kind of, um, you know, make cool movies again. Indie Horror says, We've had a number of directors tell us Troma screwed them in one way or another, a.k.a. took rights to movies, didn't pay them for any of their work, etc. I can't say for sure that that happens, but I've heard that. Um, I haven't worked with them. There is a part of me that wants to make a movie just to to let Troma have it, um, uh, in hopes that like or just to like do a, like a bucket list, like to check it off and be like I made a Troma movie, but um, I don't think I'd ever let them have like one of my babies, like you know, like a Puppet Monster Massacre or anything like that, especially with what went on with Father's Day and stuff like that. And of course, there's two sides to every story, but um, I don't know. I just you know, there's just too much. Uh, bad news coming from the trauma camp for me to really um, want to do anything with them, I guess. Full Moon, on the other hand, probably still has potential. They just need to... Um, I just wish they'd go back to their old style of filmmaking because they made some really great B-movies back in the day. I think they sort of lost sight of it. So we're almost done, right, um, Robert? Is that correct? Does anyone have a last question? Make it good. Uh, Occasionally, 
uh, at least once a day. Uh, I think that I, it's, it's accurate for me to say that. All right. Well, when I get off of here, I'm going to I got to go back and finish some special effects work. Okay, here we go. If you had to give one piece of advice to new filmmakers that are worried about starting out, what would you tell them? I tell everyone the same thing. Just fucking do it. Stop being a pussy and make your movie. Um, and, uh, oh, thank you, Ian. Ian says the movie gets better each time I watch it, dude. Thank you so much, Ian. And I forgot to mention, Ian Screams did the music for the movie. He did the score, and you should hire him and pay him lots of money to score your movie because he's amazing, and he did an amazing job. And I'm sorry I didn't mention that before, Ian. I think it just hit me like that your screen name was you. But um, Ian Francis Smith, hire him because he's awesome. Okay. Um, but yes, yes. Uh, my piece of advice is to stop being a pussy. Just make your movie. Um, grab a camera. Steal a camera. Whatever you have to do. Um, pirate your editing software. I don't give a fuck. And just make your movie. Um, you know, uh, no one's going to fault a, a, a painter for stealing paint. Just whatever you have. Not that I'm advocating stealing. Just fucking, just make your movie. It's so easy now, and it's so easy to get people to see it. I just got people to watch two of my movies, and they're not even that good. So, <laughs> so you know, make a movie and uh, get it out there. So, all right, no more questions. If there's no more questions, I'm gonna go back to watching Tremors too. <laughs> oh, hi, mom. <laughs> good night, mom. <laughs> That's my mom, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>